Oh, hey guys. So it's a little bright, so was, you know, the lighting's gonna be a little off. I'm gonna try to say back here, uh, you know, so I don't turn into Elmo's glue. Uh, I lean forward, you know, see what it's gonna be before this camera focuses. But we're over here and Sparks. Technically, it's McCarran. Like, Sparks is technically Reno, and it's like another. Really? Wow. Cat's over here getting very unhappy because I'm talking. Although he just wants to love it. Uh, but Sparks is like, fuck, what? Still another 10 to 15 miles west. Yeah. This is pretty much an industrial park is what they're building out here. Like there's a Tesla plant somewhere out here. There's a Walmart DC. There's a PetSmart DC coming out here soon. Uh, I think there's a P&G. There's a few other ones here. I got my reload. Uh, but I'm empty and Don was getting fucking slammed with snow in the last five days. Like they just got two to three feet uh, over two days. And then, you know, they're supposed to get like four to six today and then another 10 plus tomorrow. Then another four to six. It's like, Jesus, I'm empty. Uh, I, I just, I can do it. I'd just rather not. Uh, it has nothing to do with my skills or whether or not I can chain or whatever. It's the, all the other idiots, so. Like, last time I chained up with Don, it took me an hour to get to the fucking chain, like, the chain-up station. Just a chain. And then, you know, it's, it's like 27 miles, and it's like, you know, an hour, because you're chained up. You shouldn't be going more than 30 with kite chains. So really, 25 to keep you safe. It's just an hour. You know why you don't really go more than 30, and 30's pushing it? You really only go 30 if your chains are really tight because you will start flinging chains and it's really easy to do. I don't know how many trucks I saw blowing my doors off that had uh, chains chains on our trailer flapping like literally had like a strip like this long flapping and catching their uh, their under you know the, the belly of the trailer and uh, sending out sparks which is when I ran you know it's not going to do anything but it's it's a hazard because the only amount of time it starts coming off even more because you'll damage them and then they break and they rip off. Or, you know, dodge chains on the road, which, that's fine. Uh, but, I figured, I mean, I, you don't realize how many people don't really know how to communicate, communicate with a truck or a car until you really get out here. And then, like, I've had so many people ask me, even warehouse guys, like, they've, like, they've had something they need to get a hold of a truck for I meant they're driving down the road, but they didn't know how to do it. So I figured I'd make a video and try to give you some some examples. We won't cover all, uh, and we'll cover the majority of them. But there's also relies on trucks also paying attention. I uh, mean, looking over at you. Uh, most will notice you. Trust me, most will notice. But there is some that just have that tunnel vision effect, which is scary but even cars do it so i mean tunnel vision is, is part of nature you just get focused on what's ahead of you and you kind of tend to like ignore what's around you you feel better you get some food oh wow uh, but there's also some what you do you don't want to do uh all right let's, let's start with the easy one okay don't hover around the trailer don't and just because I'm doing this in my lane, if I'm in between the zippers, or between the zipper and the solid line, don't fucking flash your high beams at me either as you're getting ready to pass me. Trust me, I see you. Me doing this usually means it's windy or the road is shit. And I'm not talking about when I'm out of control. I'm talking about where it's just the trailer swaying, like, you know. And usually that's because it's windy and I'm light. Or the road is shit and it's pulling me back and forth. Or there's potholes that do this, you know. Like, there's many reasons why a truck would be doing that. Or a gust of wind just slanted to me and I'm, you know, just trying to get the, get it back over. Flashing your high boobs at me, especially at night, does not help. It actually has a reverse effect. So all I do is get my attention and thinking, oh no, I'm more over there or something else. And more than likely, I'm going to start drifting that way more. Because help. That is a natural effect on humans for some reason. Like even even bugs, like it's a bug to the light effect. You gotta fight against it. Uh, that's why you've ever noticed you drift towards bright lights when they're passing you. 
or getting pushed away, like all the way, but you, you know, you're thinking about it either way, but you're being pushed away. Uh, don't do that. That's bad. No. So, what's the correct way to thank a trucker, okay? It's the same way trucks do. So you don't have the little interrupt. Well, hit your hazards. Let them blink from once or twice. That's all you gotta do. You don't need to do anything fancy. I mean, hell, if it's daytime, hand wave works too, you know. You know, the good old classic hand wave. As long as you keep a finger down. Uh, but that works too. Okay? You know, it's not rocket science here. Uh, you, you're letting a truck in. Daytime, okay? This is the difference. Daytime, flash your high beams once or twice. Fine. Especially when you know, because you know how the cars are in the left lane. And if you're all bumper to bumper, we have our turn signal off for, you know, seconds. We really don't like cutting you off. But the reason why we do it, of course, we're waiting, because y'all won't give us a fucking choice. But you be, I've sat in the right lane for 15 plus seconds because every time there was a gap and I was thinking about it, somebody, like, it never fails. Somebody speeds up. Like, by the way, it's not really my fault. If I get over and you were, fuck, three, three uh, posts back, three, four posts back, and you're doing, you know, and I'm doing 70, I feel I'm 70. But you're doing 90 or 80, it's not my fault you're speeding. I got over, if you're going to speed limits, I got over and we would have no issues. So because it's close gap, doesn't mean I'm the wrong here. So, you know, it doesn't mean you gotta try to sit on my ass and flash your high beam somebody already up. I still can't go anywhere, can't go any faster than 70. And trucks gotta pass too. That's why if you ever notice, if one truck gets out to pass the guy who's slower and another truck behind, trucks usually let other trucks in to pass because they know how it feels. Especially the guys behind me. If the guy behind me is faster, more often than not, he'll let me sneak in and get in front of him because he already knows he's going to blow my doors off when I get over. So, you know. An extra 30 seconds is going to hurt him, nor is it going to hurt your cars. <laughs> but the real problem is, it's the bumper to bumper. If you, you want to communicate better, with, you know, and not also have your day ruined for an extra 30 seconds. Don't sit bumper to bumper. It's bad. Ah. Uh, but, you know, the whole thank you, the whole flashing your hazards once or twice, well, you can hand wave. But if it's nighttime, okay, nighttime, this is important. Oh. And I get it, I'm flashing your high beams easier, but preferred just to toggle our lights on, off real fast. Like, you, you don't have to do it once or twice or more than once, you just do it once. Literally just turn off, call them over, just once, return your headlights off, turn it back on. Because as soon as we see that, we're instantly getting over. High beam, we gotta, like, see the problem is the high beam is at night. You got guys who are like, who use it a road rage, we don't know if you're raging at us, we don't know if you're trying to tell us to hurry the fuck up, etc. There's so many options. Turn your, turn your highlights off, just at least once, I mean, just off, for like not even a second, turn him back on. Just tells us, okay, he's went, he's letting us in. Good, good, let's go. Uh, for, what about their hazards coming up? This is what I do, and this is people under some people understand it. Uh, most do. This is you can do flash your eye beams at night, or well, night especially because daytime is a little bit easier, but. Flash your beams and I, or you know, headlight switch cut off, and then high beams as you're past, or not high beam, but hazards. So you want to wait until you're close enough, so I'm not thinking you're trying to tell me my, my lights are bright. But then, as you're getting ready to pass like this, hazards. I wait, I can see them because that'll tell me something's ahead. And that's more universal than the whole you know, flash for a cop shit because that can tell me, hey, there's an accident ahead, or hey, there's wildlife, or there's something. The reason why I say this, okay? I'll give you a little example. Last winter, I'm in Oregon or, or northbound 395, you know, two lane highway. I'm up in the passes, you know, it's icy, it's snowing or whatever. I'm a U haul from the box truck. Uh, it's a box truck, U haul. Crest this hill as I'm getting ready to press it, but I'm still about 100 feet away. He immediately high beams me, puts his hazards on. I immediately start getting off it. And sure enough, as soon as I crest, I saw two trucks stuck on that hill, chaining up. He gave me a heads up, because that, that hill was slick, and that was heavy. 
that hill with my with my uh, well truck truck set had me sliding that hill with the brake set so it was slick enough where it was doing that so him giving me the heads up notice even though i was only going about 30 35 allowed me to creep over to see what's going on instead of trying to break down that hill or break as i'm pressing the hill so gravity starts getting me so that, that's a heads up notice ah uh, but you know, it works for wildlife too. I do it a lot for wildlife. I'm on two lane highway and there's a lot of them near the road or on the road, or I just had one, you know, cross over. Cause usually if one crosses over, there's gonna be more. Uh, but if they're hovering, it's usually nice to let everybody know, hey, you need to start paying attention to head. Something, something's going on, you know. Uh, I did it to another truck once. Uh, I was going, I was in my car coming down from Nermopolis in a little canyon, right? In Wyoming that is. Snake River, it's two lane highway, it's, it's very curvy. Well, this guy was going from the 60 mile an hour stretch to where I was, where it was, it was dumping sleet, and you know, it was a very slick wintery mix, and I was coming out of it before he was even in it. He was like another, I don't know, about 400 yards away. I flashed him a couple times and gave him hazards, nighttime. He did the whole blinky blinky to me, and his bitch started slowing down. Just giving somebody a heads up notice so at least they're at least you know full paying full attention going into it and then they can go yeah okay it's not as bad get on it or whatever you never know a truck of empty going into that stuff can instantly lose traction especially highway speeds going from highway speeds where it's dry to all of a sudden it's sleek slush and all that it's bad that's where a lot of accidents happen you're going from that's where i almost had mine last, and what february last february I don't remember what year or what month it was. That was my video. Drive fucking roads. And as I went to Mexico, uh, you know, where I'm, I had to ditch my lanes, I had to deal between the, both lanes. I was cruising the 70, it was rough or dry. There was that like 200 yard stretch or 200 feet stretch where it was just ice here and shit. And it caught, everybody hit that. Like, caught everybody in front of me. It's just everybody did the right thing, which is fucking props, but that's rare. Uh, well, let's see. I mean, what if something's going on? With, okay, tire, for example. Okay, tire. Let's use tire. Everybody knows the tire. How you undo it? By the way, your car horn is sometimes hard to hear with a truck. Trucks are loud. This is one of the very few times I would sit and hover. But you want to do it next to the driver's door. Because if you sit there and hover, eventually the driver, I mean, at least sit there for like a few seconds. And then, you know, I mean like three to five. And look at the driver. So trust me, if you hover, I'm instantly gonna look down. Cause now I'm like, what the fuck's this guy doing? Why is he hovering? He just blew, you know, was hauling ass. Now he's sitting here. That good driver is aware of his surroundings. So most of will notice that you came flying up on him and all of a sudden you slow down. Cause there has to be a reason why, or you just have that whole herd mentality. But I mean, it's rare when it's like that, when you just slow down the truck. Most slow down the trailer, not the truck. Uh, but there's that whole wheel, you know, you can do the point point of the back and wheel. That will tell me something's, up, something's wrong. Uh, contrary to popular belief, if our doors are open for some fucking reason, if they're not actually doing this, if they're sitting like this behind the trailer, we can't see them. You cannot see your doors. So they're sending straight out like this. You cannot see them in your mirror. It's not until they kind of do this, go out more. And yes, it is possible for the air to keep that door straight out behind you at highway speeds. It is completely possible. I have one like that. I did a blue beacon wash. I've done plenty, at least 30 washouts at that point. Just one in Michigan, uh, Blue Harbor, something, Denton Harbor, something like that. I think it was Denton. Uh, I went in there, I got a washout. It was like four o'clock in the morning. They closed one door correctly. They, they close the other door. My mirror, I mean, we're, we're sitting in a truck. I mean, and then they just, they do everything themselves. It, it, it's been beginning for this. Uh, they don't even let you a reaper run when you're gonna wash, which is, even if there's, you know, meat, whatever, if they're doing a trailer wash, nope, gets turned off. I don't understand why, it's waterproof, so. Uh, but they didn't close that door and it came undone as it was going down the highway and it stayed behind me. But I 
I didn't even notice. I mean, because it stayed behind me. There was no wind. So the, there's a vacuum effect. Just kept it in there. Uh, you know, that whole draft thing, that air squeezing behind, pushing things, you know, pushing things together as it goes off the trailer before, before it falls off the completely. Well, some guy came hauling ass on me. He was like two lanes away. I was in the right lane. He was in two lanes away. And he immediately came up beside me, pointed back at the door and did this. You know, I was like, door, immediately door. So there's a problem. Try to make it understand the driver can, you know, try to do something for the door to understand, or for the door, for the driver to understand. And if the driver, if you can't necessarily make contact with the driver, don't break, don't get in front of them, brake check them. Don't do, don't do anything stupid. Just leave them be. Technically that door was his responsibility. Technically the door was mine. But he saved me a headache and he saved everybody else a headache. I would eventually notice it probably was getting off the interstate, you know, start doing turns. I would notice it then. But just, it helps. Uh, there's other ways you can do things too. Now, if you don't know how to explain the problem, at least pointing at it, like, even, like for example, brake smoking. Because not all smoke is visible. Sometimes it's light enough, or if I'm dragging something, etc. Just point towards it. Usually, if you're pointing towards the trailer, that's gonna get well, that's gonna get some notice pretty quick. So if you're pointing down. You're pointing back down towards the, tra the trailer tires. Yeah, uh, but don't. But don't look at it like you're trying to, like, don't make it appear like you're road racing. Don't come up next to us, hover next to us, and point to the side of the road, like to the shoulder. Don't do that, because that's the universal sign of pull over your ass beat type thing, okay? Ah, so don't do that. Point towards the problem. And at least, like, a driver at least, if he cares enough, will pull over and at least check it out. And if you want to, you can pull over with them. Uh, but it is also possible to, for a truck to be on fire and not notice it. it. Just depends on the conditions and where the fire is. Inside brake fire, it just started. No, hardly any smoke. I mean, it could, there's no smoke, but it was, it was so windy and it was snowing. Brakes froze is what it was. Uh, it was just smoke. It, it was underneath the trailer and it was a really uh, low boy. So you couldn't see it from, you know, the guy, his, his partner behind us in company couldn't see him. It's close, too close enough. I saw it only because I had the, I mean, I saw briefly. I had to do it like, what the fuck, is he on fire? Especially in the winter, you know. He's going down the highway in the winter, you don't expect him to be on fire. Uh, but I, you know, I pulled up to him, yelled fire. And he immediately pulled over, immediately, and like three other trucks did. So we all like put it up, but as soon as you heard the word fire, that's what I'm saying. Make it simple. And you gotta make sure you're allowed. Because like I said, when you're rolling out a window and that truck rolls out of its window, it is fucking screaming loud. It, 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 I mean, it is like tornado winds loud. It, you have to make sure you say this. Don't use a lot of words. Don't use a lot of words. Just say something like fire is easy, flat tire, you know? Something like that. Uh... For example, blowout, if there's a lot of trucks in the area, blowouts are one of the hardest ones. The hardest ones to really sometimes feel. Contrary to popular belief, you will not always feel the blowout. You'll hear it for sure. I felt the blowout shockwave. And I like I'm, I don't know, I'm like 200 or 300 feet away from this truck in the fuel pile. And I I was falling behind this guy's highway speeds. He was in about 73, he had a blowout, and I felt the fucking shockwave. I felt a little air. Not, it wasn't like, like strong, but I felt it. Uh, but like, there was one guy who just passed me doing about 77. He's in front of me and blows a tire. He got his brakes, but he didn't really sit down. I, I don't think he, because there was like seven trucks around him, like uh, behind him. So I don't know if he thought it was him or what. But I flashed my high beams at him like three times. Cause I, so you know, he'll at least stop and look around and say, okay, was it me? Was it somebody else? And he immediately started getting over. Cause I had full vision on it. I saw the blowout. Uh, so, you know, there's ways you communicate. Just gotta use your head. 
trust me, trucks aren't out here being pain in the ass, you guys. We hate using our weight. We hate forcing our way into traffic. We also govern, majority of us. Yes, you can see trucks, trucks will blow your doors off too. But those are also owner ops who own their truck. There is various, various governor speeds, uh, governor speeds out here, meaning speed caps. So for example, this truck to 70, it's all I could do. Yeah, I could technically go faster with gravity, but eventually it's gonna call right back to 70. Doesn't mean I don't take full advantage of doing that, you know, using gravity. Uh, so we all got, uh, hell, trucks that to work with each other too. And it's also fresher than the other trucks that out here do not work with you. But yeah, speed is a major issue, which does create many other problems, which I'll probably talk about at some point later. Because you take you take the full risk yourself. I mean, it's different. I'm not talking about like ripping the car car's hood off as they're getting over. I'm talking about if I'm getting over and there's like three car lanes, okay? Four car lanes. At least, you know, it looks like it. It's probably more, but it looks like it. Which is, that's probably one. The roughly in the mirror distance, at least 100 feet. If I'm getting, starting to get over, you take the risk of going over the speed limit. Like, and if I don't get over, chances, are, like, here's the problem too with trucks, there's a lot of people don't understand. If I don't take the afternoon I'm given to get over, I might not, I might be sitting there for a while waiting for another one. I'm not joking, I've had my truck signal on for 15 plus seconds one time, or not one time, but actually a couple days ago, because in Idaho, People want to sit in the left lane, bumper to bumper, even though the right lane is plenty empty. But instead of doing this, you know, the pass, they'd rather sit here and sit bumper to bumper. And it's not, not that keeps getting worse and worse and worse because nothing's being done about it. Yeah, if I was in a fucking left lane just sitting there, I'd get pulled over because, you know, fuck me, I guess. The cars could do it, no problem. Oh, but, anyways, hope that helps some. If you, got, if you got others in the comments, go ahead and post them. I just gave some of the basics with a little bit of ranting. I'm still in a fucking 22 minute long video. Anyways, you guys see it later. Catch you next time. Bye!